<laughs> we are here and live. Uh, just live. Like to say hello, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for joining us for today's conversation. I'm going to let you know this gentleman and I have had multiple conversations. I am so excited to be able to dive into today's topic because it's so aligned with what we're doing right here, right now. But the topic is how to attract and service high-valued clients. Who doesn't want more of those, right? (laughs) Through a holistic service model. And if you're not sure what that means, we are going to unpack that for you. Anyway, this is Rory Henry with us. And what we're going to do is touch on ready to increase the value you provide to your clients. What's required to offer financial advisory services, even if you don't have the alphabet and the letters behind your name. (laughs) And of course, we're going to go into the geek part We're talking about some of the tech stack, some tech recommendations. So have pen and paper ready. Rory always gives a lot. And we'll let you know how to find out more uh, information as we wrap up. But let me just share a little bit. (laughs) He is the director at Arrowwood Family Office and co-founder of AFO Wealth Management Forward. He's been in the tax and financial advisory profession for at least 15 years, probably much more. He's being generous. He's created a program that helps accounting professionals incorporate holistic wealth management and proactive planning services into their practice. So if this is something you've been thinking about, he is able to absolutely guide you through the process. The other thing about Rory is that he hosts the AFO Wealth Management Forward podcast. It has so many interviews, <laughs> the Wall Street Journal, Forbes, Fortune Magazine, <laughs> Accounting Today, and so many more. So that is something you want to tune into. And once again, another designation that Rory does have, which I absolutely love, <laughs> is he is an accredited behavioral financial advisor. So what does that mean? It dives into the emotional IQ part of money, which yeah. means that it looks at traditional finance, psychology, and neuroscience. And neuroscience is basically how our brains are wired. Yes. Uh, so you can learn more about Arrowroot Family Office at arrowrootfamilyoffice.com. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> and we'll put that below as well in the chat. But Rory, please, please. I am so excited. Oh my gosh. This is the third time we've we've been together in one week, Lauren. I love it. We have been having many, many conversations. So this is just one to kind of build upon everything else. But uh, before we really get into the nitty gritty about this, just talk a little bit about your background and your role at Arrowroot Family Office. And, 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 And also, I want to just make sure that people understand what a family office is because it's a little bit different than um, some other types of company setups. Yeah, that's a oh, great question. So I'm the director here, as you mentioned. Um, I uh, also have that podcast. We create a program that's educating and partnering with CPAs and accounting firms to offer this holistic wealth management uh, service offering, what we're calling a virtual family office, integrating really tax, accounting, wealth management, insurance, and estate planning. So when people think of a family office, Lauren, people usually think of the John D. Rockefellers. <laughs> the JP Morgans, the Jeff Bezos, mm-hmm. the Elon Musk, right? Where they had professional service providers, an attorney, a CPA, a financial advisor working under one roof to provide the family with the best advice possible. So yes, that does happen still, but with technology now advancing, we're able to really provide these family office level services to people of any size net worth. So the construction worker, the nurse, the teacher, integrating the solutions, whether that's in partnership with a CPA and a wealth manager or or bringing this in-house and actually upskilling your people or hiring within and are sort of offering this holistic model to clients, which we believe really is the future uh, of, of advice, uh, integrating uh, the tax side, tax efficient strategies, as well as wealth building strategies. And then most importantly, making sure that the family is protected in the end. Um, so we'll go into the behavioral finance stuff, which uh, I believe is fascinating uh, because it really takes a look at uh, not only uh, debits and credits and taxes and investments, but it goes into the insurance planning and, and, and death as well. It's really uh, making sure you're preparing uh, people for the certainty that is uncertainty. So we'll touch upon that later. Uh, but the family office is really assess- accessible to those practitioners, those in the audience. Uh, they're really looking to diversify their services and provide more value to clients. 
And, and, and I just want to dig a little bit more into the family yeah. office. I do have some clients that actually do work with a family office as well. Would you say that those clients are looking for different benefits, outcomes, or have different expectations than your traditional accounting client would? Yeah. So I go back to this, and this is why I love the work that you're doing, Lauren, and what your, your people in your audience are doing. They're, they're working to, to make sure that they are not transactional, they're relational. Because what are families looking for? That, that's that relationship. So our family office was really born out of a need to provide concierge services to clients. Uh, mm-hmm. And it was ultra high net worth clients, but because of technology now, we're able to provide that to the mass affluent or even the everyday client. So it's that relationship, taking care of that family in case of any unforeseen circumstances, making sure there's an estate plan put in place. Uh, they say upwards of 60% of the population don't have proper estate plans put in place. So it's really taking that into consideration, making sure someone has uh, their family taken care of in case of any health emergencies, having that life insurance put in place, that disability insurance, that long-term care. So it's really taking that that transactional type of a relationship uh, and making it more of an advisory uh, uh, a model to advise them not only on their finances, but the, uh, the, the risk management of, of their life as well. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I think that advisory is definitely the trend that the accounting professional, whether it's bookkeepers, tax preparers, yeah. accountants, are moving into that the more that you can really differentiate yourself and understand the problem that you solve for your clients is what is going to help your firm to continue to move forward and remain relevant. So I I, I think that along with that, part of what I hear you talking about over and over again is holistic wealth management. So when I think about holistic, I think about health. <laughs> Yeah. And wellness and not going to a traditional doctor, but going to someone who's a little bit right? more organic. So yes. how does holistic go with wealth management? Right. And that's really holistic advice is really looking at the whole picture of, of a person's finances because one decision really affects another. So this is why uh, I believe that we are in, in a great time in, in the professions because we can really integrate these solutions. Uh, you shouldn't be looking at things just from a tax perspective, technically, or just an investment perspective, or just a life insurance perspective, or just from an estate planning perspective. You need to take uh, in consideration all these professional services to provide the best advice to that client. So that's what it means to be holistic, really taking that 360 degree view of a person's finances and then providing them with the des- best decision possible uh, from an insurance perspective, an investments perspective, a tax perspective. Mm-hmm. So, so it's really taking that 360 view as opposed to staying in one silo. Correct. Correct. Mm-hmm. Okay. So accountants by nature, they're analytical, <laughs> yes. right? And, and they love processes and systems. And tell me about the mindset that might really help to open up the opportunity of moving more into offering the financial advisory services. So this is why I love what you're doing, Lauren, because I think this is the first step. You're showing them the your clients out there how to move from the time-based billing to, to the value. Uh, based pricing. And, you know, tax planning is a tremendous opportunity. We always say it's the bridge into wealth management. It's providing that future facing advice. Um, And I know we talked about our podcast yesterday. I don't think uh, accountants out there give themselves enough credit. Uh, They just went through the pandemic. Uh, We call it, I was with uh, Jody Padar and she said it's a Navy SEAL training that they went through with all these tax law changes, their regulatory changes. So they don't give themselves enough credit that they are uh, agile we, we call it uh, uh, AQ, adversity quotient, um, where they deal with adversity all the time. So they have the ability to start offering more of these future-facing services. So it's having that growth mindset. Uh, and then we always say this is you know taking uh, the, just that first step. How do you eat an elephant in one bite at a time? So just working with that one client, that one tax plan. We just worked uh, recently with a client that you referred over to us. Uh, Lauren, and we opened up a, a 401k uh, at the last minute there in December, and that 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 client really is, realized those tax savings uh, last year. So it's taking those first steps, and uh, that ta- that tax professional is excited about giving us more clients and working with more clients uh, together. So I think uh, I think they need to have that belief. I, I say that I love behavioral finance because I'm in the belief and the behavior business is providing those practitioners out there the belief that they can do it. And those first steps, I think, if you want to look at concrete steps, is starting with that tax plan, 
and, and mm-hmm. you have that strategy, you, you're, you know that domain. And then once they have that tax plan, those investment strategies need to be implemented. And there's where you can start partnering with a wealth manager to start offering more of these services and that holistic uh, advice viewpoint. And, and when I hear tax strategies, a lot of times everybody else who's a bookkeeper yeah. or not doing taxes kind of like tunes down. But, but we right. really want whoever's listening, even if you're not doing tax prep, to tune in because this is really about being a resource. And even if you're not doing the financial advisory yourself, yourself that you are a resource then, Rory, for those people Correct. that want to be able to build this into their firm to giving them the tools to do that. Uh, so any thoughts about that? If someone isn't actually doing taxes, how this applies to them? Well, they are working with somebody who does do taxes. Yes, right? they are. <laughs> so having that great relationship and equipping them with uh, the necessary uh, bookkeeping or the, the, the financials they're going to need will only help them to provide their clients with with, with better service. Um, but you know, I believe that you ha- can have a holistic solution. Um, there, you know, automation is uh, allowing us to provide more and more services easier to clients in a more efficient and what you say effective manner. Um, so for those firms out there looking to grow, uh, you know, I just had Hatindra Patel on my podcast and we discussed CAS and CAS 2.0 and we discussed. Uh, you know, private equity get in the space and, and the flywheel effect of really it's taking that that client and that's the relate as you have if you have that relationship you could provide so many different services to that client. Mm-hmm. So and once again, this goes back to the pricing strategy. If you could price more, uh, you provide more value, you bring more revenue to your firm, you can allow your firm to grow and maybe provide more services, which will increase your revenue, which will allow you to provide more services to more high value clients. Uh, so it's that snowball effect. Um, mm-hmm. out there. So I, I, it's just tremendous opportunity. I say, I was on a podcast as well with uh, Seth Feinberg from the accounting web. And we said, it's the golden age of, of accounting. There's so much opportunity out there to really grow your firm. Uh, but you need coaches like you, Lauren, out there helping people price and value properly uh, so they can increase revenue and grow their business. And, and, and you bring up a couple of good points is that so much of traditional accounting and bookkeeping has been compliance after the fact. And What's really happening now is there's a lot of conversation, noise, changes occurring where now you compare uh, future-focused aspects, forecasting, budgeting for growth or valuation, exit strategy, along with the after the fact. I I see it like pairing wine with really good chocolate. (laughs) Yes, I agree. (laughs) And, 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 And that that is where the value comes it's not just doing the compliance after the fact, which has been so traditional, but really about bringing in that future focus of helping them apply the numbers yes. so that they're getting the best benefit. The possible. business intelligence. That, that yes, those debits and credits, those that's the entry point, right? And then you can start providing that high-level advice, mm-hmm. advice to clients, so that business advisory, that CAS, the CAS 2.0. And, and I say, look, if you're doing the business advisory, there's no reason why you can't start doing the, the personal advisory. Those two need to be working together holistically right. to provide the, the client the best advice possible. And Hatindra Patel of CPA Trendlines, he calls it the network of network effects uh, because you have those business owners who have employees, right, who have families, you can service those people. So, you mm-hmm. know, the more you can become more efficient and, and price your services and provide more value, uh, the more you can grow and the opportunities uh, are, are abound. And for people that are really interested in what you're talking about and being able to expand their reach, not just service the business owner themselves, but their employees, their family, which increases their net, as you're saying, yeah. are there like specific licenses or designations <laughs> or the alphabet that you need behind your name to have wealth management services is something you offer? Yeah, that's a good question. So um, financial planning, technically, you don't need to be licensed to offer financial planning. I, but you can, I always said it's great to be a CFP. Uh, and then a Series 65 is the license you need to become an RIA, which we at Root Family Office uh, are. We're a registered investment advisory firm. Uh, and that Series 65 test is a lot easier than the CPA exam. <laughs> so if they say it takes a, about 40 hours. I say it probably takes about 20 hours. And if you take that test, it can transform your business. Uh, this wealth management business is a great business to be in. It's a recurring revenue that grows over time. And you don't see many financial advisors going over to become CPAs or bookkeepers. So <laughs> they're not making that switch. But you're seeing increasingly more CPAs and people in, in tax uh, and accounting you know, go over to the financial advisory side. 
and start working in that model. So, you know, we're seeing more and more of an increasing adoption uh, of providing the financial advisory side of the business because it is so lucrative. Those margins are so high. They're stickier clients and it's recurring over time. Now, if someone's offering wealth advisory services, is it recommended that they maybe team up with a financial advisor <laughs> to be able to help those clients implement what you're suggesting? Yes. So that's, I always say, you got to crawl before you walk, before you run. Uh, and so we offer uh, an opportunity to partner with our family office if it's a, if it's a right fit. Uh, there's uh, what was used to be called a solicitor. It's now called a promoter. They just had a recent uh, SEC marketing rule change. Uh, in about uh, almost a little less than a dozen states, you don't need a license, Series 65 license. Um, there's some registration uh, uh, components to it. Uh, but in most other states, you do need a Series 65 license to share in fees. Um, and you can do have a promoter solicitor relationship where you can't offer investment advice if you're not an actual investment advisor representative. Now, you can become an investment advisor representative of a firm like Arrowroot, a wealth management firm, and you fall under the compliance umbrella. Uh, and then you can start obviously servicing clients and offering investment advice. And then uh, the last uh, way to go about things is becoming your own RIA, your own registered investment mm -hmm. advisory firm, where you take on the, on the compliance, administrative, and operational costs, but you obviously uh, taking all the fees from the client. And, and now that we have like that overview of requirements, some of the mindset, uh, how this really benefits your clients, let's go into the geeky <laughs> tech stack part of it. Any technology that really uh, would be helpful for offering this type of uh, thing? Yeah, so I, whenever I watch a podcast, a webinar or anything like else, um, you know, I always want actual steps. Like what can I do right away? What can I implement my business right away? <laughs> and very few times do you actually get that. Um, so I'm going to give you two because I could geek out all day. I built a technology at one point. I love technology, but I know uh, those in the accounting profession have technology coming out of their ears. <laughs> so I'm going to give you two right now. Uh, one is called trust and will. So if you want to offer estate planning in your business, there's a great venture back technology called trust and will. They have will Bills for clients as low as $169, I believe, you can create a trust for $599. So basically, you can create a whole estate planning practice uh, or service line within your practice by utilizing trust and will. Now, for more complex estate plans, if you're talking about family office clients, you know, uh, 5 million, 10 million, 20 million, you would probably need, obviously, an estate planning attorney or, uh, or more complex solution. But for most of those clients out there, it's a phenomenal way um, to start working with them to offer estate planning. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other one I like is an, uh, a platform called Asset Map. They just partner with CPA.com. I'm a good friend with uh, the founder, Adam Holt. And I love that because it really is a holistic uh, uh, map of a client's finances, of their full financial picture. So it takes in uh, their insurance needs. It looks at the cash flow. It puts all their assets and liabilities on one simple to understand page. So if I was a practitioner out there, I would check out those two solutions, do a quick demo uh, for yourself, see how it works with you and then how you can apply it to your clients. And you can always just reach out to me. Hey, Rory, uh, I had a question on this, you know, or this is how, how could I apply this to my client? I'm, I'm willing to work with people out there. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And I think that um, what I'm going to say is business owners are so busy working in their business. They're overwhelmed. They're thinking about the day to day. And they never, ever think about the trust and will part and how by doing that is going, what they do today to actually put that in place, protects their family, protects yes. everything that they worked from getting caught up in the court system and probate, yes. especially yes. if you live in California. Yes. <laughs> yes. So if you want to really you know, be that advisor to your clients, then you want to really think about having a conversation with them yeah. that benefit about planning to protect everything that they're everything. working hard to build today yeah. for their family and um, keeping it out of the government hands and getting it caught <laughs> up in the court system, which could be messy and messy. years. Yeah, I mean, Robin and, Williams- And it tears families apart. It tears families apart. We've seen it over and over again. Uh, Robin Williams didn't have an up, updated estate plan. You know, they're fighting uh, about that in court. So, uh, you know, even if you you are a business owner, those practitioners in, on the call right now, uh, you know, if you don't have an updated estate plan, you know, it's a great solution to uh, to uh, create one. It's very easy. You can do it in the comfort of your
your own home. You don't have to sit in front of an attorney like you would before on their mahogany desk and answer all these very sensitive questions. Mm -hmm. um, they really streamline the process. And we always say, you know, you can become a CFO, a chief family officer. And, and that's why I believe estate planning is a great way to do that because you're really looking at, at the, the family and, and having that family office level of care uh, by making sure their family's protected in case of any type of unforeseen circumstances. Absolutely. And I think it just expands your role as being yes. that trusted, trusted. Uh, advisor, which then increases loyalty, client retention. Um, it, it just is goodness all the way around. Yes, okay. yes. Let's talk about the behavioral finance designation. Okay. And um, what exactly does that mean? How does it work? Oh, my God. So you're right. So it's, it's traditional finance meets neuroscience meets psychology. I can geek out on this all day. Um, but I think this where this could really apply to the accounting profession, and I think they get a little frustrated when they see financial advisors make all this money or, or making money off the clients when they really uh, – advisors don't beat the stock market. 87% <laughs> of portfolio performance comes down to consistent saving and investing, right? They always say, you, you, get, you know, you're as likely to throw a dart against uh, a, a dartboard uh, to pick a stock, uh, a successful stock. You're not beating the S&P 500. Stats show that it just doesn't happen. Uh, so really what's – it's about coaching people. People to make good financial decisions uh, in the face of uncertainty. Um, so we, that's what behavioral finance allows us to do is help our clients uh, prepare for the certainty that is uncertainty. So uh, this is really where holistic comes into play because we have to prepare them for maybe an untimely death, making sure that they have an estate plan put in place, what we just talked about, right? Or make sure they plan for any health issues. Uh, so having these correct insurances put in place. Um, or have disability, long-term care. And then it goes down to, you know, if there's a good market and a healthy economy or a bad market and a, and a tough economy, preparing, making sure they have the proper financial plan to put in place. Uh, so it's really, it's a systematic approach of looking at a client's finances from the top down, um, from, you know, the worst case scenario of death, all the way down to, you know, the market not being great, uh, a downturn in the market. Um, and they help people with making sure they're making the correct decisions. And so they call it the four R's. And so when you're making a decision, I talk about neuroscience and psychology, you know, many times it's our amygdala is first, uh, we react first from our amygdala, the fight or flight response, right? Well, we need to That's be- That's you for, get overwhelming anxiety. Overwhelming anxiety, like, yeah, public speaking, right? Asking someone out, yeah, mm -hmm. you know? So uh, what it comes down to is really, it's 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 just like investing or, or, or thinking like a monk. It's coming down to recognizing that thought, that emotion or that action. So taking- uh, uh, making sure you're cognizant of what you're thinking at that point time or what the emotion is. So recognizing that emotion and then reflecting. So reflecting on your long-term goals, your values, and then looking at if you have any biases. Is there confirmation biases? Are there any heuristics going on? You're making any shortcuts? Uh, so once you recognize uh, those issues, you then can reframe it with all the data you just went over uh, to make uh, a reframed decision from there. Uh, and then lastly, make the correct response. So it's really taking that emotionally charged uh, um, emotion or, or, or thought and, and recognizing it, uh, reflecting on it, reframing it, and then responding uh, with that prefrontal cortex in a, cortex in a measured uh, uh, a way. So uh, it's interesting. I'm geeking out. I, you know, I love it. I can talk it, uh, about it for a while. Uh, there's been a couple studies done, uh, just a couple interesting points. There was a morning star, morning star study done, uh, Lauren, that said more so than your age, your income, um, uh, or your gender, it's your view of your future self that will dictate your savings. Um, nice. So they say that painting mm -hmm. a vivid and visual picture of your future self uh, has a, a bigger effect on then how much money you make or how what's your time what's your time horizon uh, or, or your education or your gender. So we always try to teach people uh, to really look at your values and then try to paint a, a vivid picture of what that future is going to look like, uh, so you can make those necessary behavior changes uh, to that, make that future come true. And, and so we've been talking about a lot of concepts. We've been talking about the 30,000 foot view strategies, yeah. some real te technical things as well. Can you share maybe an example of how an accounting professional helped their first client move in this direction? Like what were some of the <laughs> things that they focused on or benefits that happened as a result of that uh, with maybe just one person? Yeah, so it goes to making sure that, that people are aligning their values with their goals, uh, with their behaviors. So just having a goal of you know retiring at age 
uh, 65 with a million dollars, that's just a goal. But once you tie that to a value, we go through a values-based exercise where we have, there's 50 different cards and you, you narrow it down to five uh, values. Many people have family as a value or security. Uh, so once you can recognize that value and people uh, can identify with that, they're more likely to make those changes. So it's a great exercise to do with yourself and your clients uh, is to start having a value-based planning um, and really having that as the anchor of how you make your decisions. Uh, because values will dictate those goals and then those goals will dictate those, those behaviors and those behaviors will in turn reflect those values. Excellent. And uh, I'm going to just pivot real quickly to your <laughs> podcast because I think that there's a wealth of knowledge there as well. So who are some of the people that you have talked to that have been amazing? Oh my gosh. Um, there's so many great guests that I've had on, Lauren. Uh, um, recently I had on the former, uh, chief of risk at, uh, 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 Morgan Stanley, and he came to the Obama, Obama administration, uh, post 2008, uh, to help solve the financial crisis. Uh, he worked at the SEC and the treasury department. Um, and he talked about, uh, the current geopolitical climate and how we're going through a period of deglobalization after uh, the last 40 years of globalization. And we're doing a decoupling from China. And he talked about, how the U.S. and its allies are doing French shoring. So we're bringing jobs and uh, and workers back and, and moving them towards uh, our shores onshore or to uh, 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 French shoring. So it was a fascinating podcast to get his insight. He talked about FTX and, and Sam Bakeman fried um, So uh, he was fascinating. And then some of the behavioral finance people that, that we've that I've mentioned or con concepts that I mentioned were great. Dr. Daniel Crosby. Uh, from Orion Advisor Solutions. He's a New York Times bestselling author. He talked about the three E's of behavior change. Uh, to change someone's behavior, you really need education. Uh, so uh, they say smoking, 13% of the population smokes, 14% uh, doctors, 27% uh, nurses. So just because you know you shouldn't smoke doesn't mean you will stop. You need education, environment, and encouragement. So uh, making sure if you want to run in the morning, put the shoes at the, the foot of the bed, or if you don't want to eat junk food, don't have junk food in the pantry. <laughs> and then you need that encouragement, yep. right? You need that coach, you need that Lauren Fogelman. You need that therapist, right? Um, that personal trainer to, to coach you along and cheer you uh, to make those necessary behavior changes. So I believe that uh, the financial advisors, account out there um, really can be uh, those uh, encouragers, right? And put the people in the right environment um, and give them the right education to make those, those necessary behavior changes. Sweet. So part of what we're talking about is really raising the bar. Uh, Client-centered firms yes. are all about value and adding value to the clients. This is a way to be able to do it as well. Uh, and I'm sure that off of your podcast, there's additional nuggets for <laughs> ongoing learning, insight, and uh just ideas that you might not have thought about on your own. Yeah. So we're going to wrap up. You've made some powerful points today. Uh, really. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. As you know, Lord, I've had tooth issues, so I didn't sleep at all last night. <laughs> so I, I hope I was good on the podcast. I'm a little off. Uh, I'm going to the oh, dentist. Lori, right nobody after knows that except for you and I. And, and uh, you know what? You probably know more than me. You are totally spot on. Um, you delivered, <laughs> so it's all, right. all good. And, and 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 really, it's been a great conversation. I continue to learn every single yeah. time that we have a conversation and a meeting, Rory. Uh, yes. And happy to introduce you here to everybody so that they can really connect with you, find out more about how to be able to raise the bar in their firm and add more value to their clients. Yep. Um, and so- if people want to reach out to you, what is the best way for them to do that? Uh, you can email me, Rory at arrowrootfamilyoffice.com. I'm always on LinkedIn. You can LinkedIn message me, um, uh, Twitter, Rory S. Henry as well. Um, please follow and subscribe to the podcast. You can get CPE on Blake Oliver's app. And just for those in the audience, I want to recognize uh, them for, for really being part of your community, Lauren. Uh, because they are making those necessary adjustments. I'm a firm believer that this profession is one of the best professions uh, out there. And, and you're equipping those practitioners to provide uh, value to their clients. And you're, they're providing a better life for themselves and their employees as well. And, and I truly believe that you know, you're providing them some of those first steps to maybe even have a bigger uh, business and maybe offer wealth management services or this holistic uh, 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 offering. Uh, so I just want to recognize you and those in the audience out there for the tremendous job. Job and, and what you're doing in the marketplace. 
Rory, thank you for the engaging conversation. I just also want to acknowledge and thank everybody for joining in with us today, taking the time away from their busy day to be, be able to really yes. get that insight, that tip that's going to uh, make a difference for the quality of service that they offer. This is Warren Fogelman, Business Success Solution, showing accounting professionals how to double their income, working yes. half the time. Until next time. <laughs>